Uh, hey everybody, uh, welcome to the two programs, to Embedded in Intelligent Systems and Information Technology. My name is Martin, I'm Program Manager. My name is Veronica and I'm responsible for some courses in programming at the university in general and at some of the courses that you might be taking with us. And uh, we hope to give you some useful information to get started today. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I think or we think that you might want to get prepared before coming to us to make the best of your time with us. We start by presenting the structure of the program and then go on to little tips about what they might need to know yeah. before coming or prepare themselves with before coming to us. Exactly. Um, so first we'll talk about the Embedded and Intelligent System pro uh, Master Program. Um, so in year one, uh, you will take some core courses uh, in computer science, this algorithms course, and also mathematics, engineering, math. Uh, and basically, you will also um, take courses in three different areas. One is embedded systems, one is in in intelligent systems, and the third is integration and um, applications. Uh, and then in the second year, uh, you've got uh, sort of a, a larger course uh, called the Design of Embedded Intelligence Systems, where you're going to do a lot of practical work uh, with a robot. And the thesis will start. Um, so that sh should be very exciting. Uh, and there's many different options to choose from for electable courses. Um, so you can look into that. Uh, for the Information Technology Master, uh, there's many shared courses, um, but uh, here we focus not just on vehicles, but also on health and vehicles, and there's also um, some uh, a course related to digital service innovation and a stronger focus on the intelligent systems aspect. Uh, but you will also have the same core courses in computer science and mathematics. Um, so, uh, again, there's uh, an electable course, uh, which you can look into, uh, whichever uh, course you're more interested in. Um, so one of the more exciting things about the master program is when you get to choose your thesis project, I think. Um, so we have uh, many different supervisors, and we sometimes have also opportunities to work with companies for the thesis project. Uh, and it's quite a massive work, uh, and it allows you the freedom to pick some specialized topic that you're more interested in. Um, so every year we have many different uh, kinds of thesis projects. Uh, this is one example of what my students are doing this year. They're creating a robot exercise trainer that is intended to help people with dementia um, who might forget how many exercises they've done or have trouble focusing. Um, so the idea is that uh, there's a lack of human trainers, but maybe robots, uh, we can mass produce them and we can help out there. And uh, the students are intending to submit their work to a conference in Canada in October. Uh, another example of a thesis project is um, one by uh, Thomas Rosensutter uh, in 2016. Uh, so as part of a team from Halmstad University, uh, he participated in an international platooning competition called the GCDC, where we won first place. Uh, and he also received an award at an AI conference for a paper based on his master thesis. Um, in 2017, we also competed in a, another competition, which was about uh, artwork created by robots, and uh, we got a sixth place out of, I think, 32 different teams uh, from all around the world, uh, which was pretty fun. And in 2018, we also participated in an international drone competition in Arizona in the United States, and we won second place, uh, which I think was really also phenomenal. Uh, and uh, it was a very interesting experience for the students, I've heard. Um, so uh, this year, um, it's not our programs, but uh, from Holmstead University, we're sending a solar-powered car to drive across Australia for a competition. So I think that will also be very interesting. Uh, so as you see, the 
program is organized with courses that are technical in areas like uh, artificial intelligence or embedded systems or data science yeah. and a little bit of mathematics. But in most of the courses, you will need to do practical stuff to be able to work in the kind of projects that uh, Martin yeah, was yeah. showing you. Definitely. Yeah, so it's not just to learn about the theory, but also to do these practical exercises. And we are very proud that our master's education combines these two things. Yeah. Yeah, but that means also that you will be need to do a lot of programming. And then here are some things that we suggest you should get prepared for before coming to us. We don't have any introductory programming courses in the master's program. So what is it that you are expected to know? Well, you should be able to have taken courses up to what is usually called algorithms in data and data structures in what we usually call imperative languages. Examples of imperative languages are C or C++ or Java or Python. I have marked Python because most of the uh, programming in the area of intelligent systems might be done in Python. But I also want to mention C and C++ because if you happen to end up programming a, an embedded system, you might need to do it in C. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean, the level of algorithms and data structures? Well, of course, you should be familiar with how to use for loops and while loops and if statements and switch statements. That's what you find in all of these languages, both in C, C++, Java and Python have these constructs for writing programs. But you should also uh, know that uh, y there are different types of data. You should be able to know what operations apply to numbers, what operations apply to strings, how to work with arrays. You should also be able to encapsulate part of your program in so-called abstractions. In some of these languages like C, these abstractions are just functions. In Java, you also have methods. But in uh, Java and Python, you also have the possibility of defining data types by using classes, for example. And what data structures? Well, you should be familiar with what lists are, queues, stacks, hash tables, and graphs. I mean, these are not only knowing what they are, but more or less how to use them in one of these languages of your preference that we mentioned. What kind of algorithms? Well, you should know about sorting and binary search. You will not need to program quick so sort or binary search, but you should know about them. You should know that they are in the libraries of Java or of Python, and you should know how to use it and when. So why do you need to know all these? Well, most of the courses include practical work that in most cases involves programming. We usually call these laboratory exercises or projects. Some of the courses will teach you new programming concepts and techniques. And then you need to master the previous ones to be able to get working with the new techniques that you learn. Mm -hmm. So these are the two reasons that we have for asking you to come prepared. Mm -hmm. For example, in artificial intelligence, one of the first courses, you will learn and you will need to program algorithms for graphs that you might not know about. Depth for search, maybe you know. Breadth for search, maybe you know. But A star, that will be a new algorithm. For this, you need to know what hash tables are and lists. They will be used to store graphs. Um, in the course Embedded Real-Time Systems, you will learn how to program support for real-time concurrency and reactivity. So you will write programs in that course that are for embedded real-time systems. These are systems that need to, the programs in these systems need to react to external stimuli in given time um, deadlines. So you will learn how to do this. But in order to program this support for real-time concurrency and re reactivity, you will need to use queues. You will need to use lists for loops and while loops. Okay? You, will need the, you will learn the new techniques, but these new techniques rely in what I was presenting in the first slides. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other courses, big data parallel programming and embedded parallel computing yeah. that you will have to take. And in these two courses, we present new programming techniques. So you will learn how to program in frameworks like Spark and Apache Beam. Both are supported by the Google Cloud. Uh, both in Spark and in Apache Beam, you, can, you use a framework, but you need to write pieces of code, either in Java or in Python. 
and then they are put together with the tools of the framework. But you need to write simple uh, Python programs uh, or Java programs to be able to put them together and upload them to the cloud to work on massive data. But you will also learn how to program so-called many cores or graphical processing units uh, yeah, with languages that are specific for programming these massively parallel um, operations. But for this, you also need to know how to do the basic things. You exactly. need to know mm -hmm. about uh, while loops and for loops and the like. Mm -hmm. So how could you catch up? Say, if you have learned how to program some years ago, maybe in another language than the ones that we mentioned, maybe you can uh, look at the things that we show you now. So we actually have an optional course at the beginning of the program that is called Algorithms, Data Structures and Problem Solving. Yeah. which is to put you up to date. Mm -hmm. Is that the case? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, good. So I think uh, uh, we offer um, that in EIS as an option, and you, otherwise, you, if you've already taken that, uh, you can take an, in, an embedded systems course. Exactly. Uh, but in uh, information technology, I think this one is compulsory. Okay. Uh, so I think it's very good to get a solid base in this. Mm -hmm. So if what you are missing is lists, queues, stacks, hash table, graph sorting and searching, then this is a course that you should take yeah, and yeah. postpone something else. Yeah. Uh, but there are also a number of so-called massive open online courses that can be helpful. You just need to create an account on one of the platforms that I will mention now to get access to the material. You do not need to pay if you do not want to follow the courses with feedback from the teachers and a certificate, which is not something that you want to do. But if you want to watch the material that these courses have, which is usually very good, and practice on your own, then they are perfect. And here are a couple of examples. A very good course, uh, with, which is really an introduction to computer science and not only to programming, but most of the course does programming exercises, is the a very famous course, which is called CS50 at uh, Harvard University. It has a very charismatic teacher uh, and it has run for a long number of years and it's now published openly in the platform that is called edX. And here you see a link that you can use to access the material of the course. If you are interested in Java, there is an introduction to Java programming at San Jose State University by a very good teacher, Kai Horstman, who has written excellent books on programming. The course is called CSO46, and the platform is called Udacity. Here you see a link directly to the course. Great. Um, just to, to add one thing, uh, we're also going to have, uh, I think, supplemental instruction. Just uh, if uh, if you uh, are not so confident, maybe about your uh, programming uh, or your knowledge about artificial intelligence, you're very welcome to um, participate in the supplemental instruction classes. Uh, and I'm sure you'll have uh, various questions. So uh, we welcome you to contact us. Um, so in general, uh, you can send emails to Service Center with pretty much any question uh, uh, about the programs that you can think about. Uh, also, for general inquiries, you can talk with Morella. If you're interested in something to do with admissions, you can contact Stig. And if you have program-specific questions, uh, please contact me uh, at the last email address shown there. Yeah, thank okay. you very much. Thank so, you. Uh, we're hoping that you'll have a really great time here and uh, many worthwhile and interesting experiences mm -hmm. in this program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye.